Yes. Thank you very much. And GP Taylor, thank you. Thank you. 7.46. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News, our main news this morning. Andy Murray says... <laughs> and Matt has the reasons why. Here yeah. he is with this morning's weather forecast. Morning, Matt. Oh, we'll keep smiling nevertheless, Matt. Thanks very much. The banks face further scrutiny today when the Deputy Governor of the Bank of England explains what he knew about that rate-fixing scandal. Steph, as a... Now, a group of young dancers will get their very own Olympic moment this weekend. It's a journey that began 15 years ago when the ballet dancer Lee Fisher met some children from a school in Birmingham. They all had severe learning difficulties, but their determination to succeed led them to set up their own dance company. And this weekend, they'll be appearing in the London 2012 Olympic Festival. Our arts correspondent, David Silito, went to meet them. Wish them all the very best this weekend. We certainly do. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News. Still to come on the programme this morning, we're finding out why next week's weather could be crucial to part of the economy. Phil Lavelle is at a vineyard. In Hello, this is Breakfast with Susanna Reid and Bill Turnbull. Andy Murray vows to get his mind right for the Olympics after missing out on Wimbledon glory. Laura, thanks very much. Laura Vicker reporting from Dumbling. In other news this morning, the last four water companies with hosepipe bans have announced they're lifting them from today. The restrictions, which had affected millions of people in south and eastern England, have been in place since early April. Yes, the companies say they're ending the ban because of the abnormally heavy rainfall across much of the country. Hi. Now, as we've been hearing, of course, Andy Murray's bid to become the first Brit to win a Wimbledon singles title in more than 70 years was thwarted by Roger Federer as he claimed a seventh Wimbledon title, equaling the current record. So... What will he be doing now to prepare himself for the Olympics and come back fighting at the next championships with us from Wimbledon from such uh, a, a devastating moment, such an emotional moment, really, as uh, Murray did yesterday? I mean, the question, I suppose, you know, notwithstanding the Olympics coming up, and of course he said he's got to get his mind right for that, can he get his mind right to win Wimbledon? And can he do that while Roger Federer is still playing? Well, Murray may have lost. There was... A British champion at Wimbledon this year in the form of Johnny Murray. George Barry, thanks very much indeed, Barry Flatman from uh, Sunday Times. Time now, coming up to a quarter past eight, and still to come on the programme today, the... Meanwhile, Matt has a look at this morning's weather, doing his best to predict <laughs> yeah. how much rain there's going to be this week. Oh, Matt, thanks very much. It's day 52 of the Olympic torch relay, and today it's been heading from Luton to Oxford. And the first runner of the day... More used to driving than running. Lewis Hamilton kicked things off and our reporter Robert Hall caught up with him and asked him what it was like to take part in the relay. Well, he sounded a lot better live, actually, didn't he? Lewis Hamilton there from Luton. We're going to boost his level <laughs> and play that to you a bit later on. 18 minutes past eight. Now, as we've heard, after what seems like months of rain, the last of the hosepipe bans have now been lifted. But aside from being pretty miserable, the weather over these summer months is crucial for certain industries. And uh, we'll be speaking to Phil Lavelle at a vineyard in Wiltshire this morning. Meanwhile, though, yes. in Wandsworth... Yes. Is it raining or not? What shall we Black find out? Let's Here he is. Morning, John. No. no, exactly. And speaking of vintages, they've got the champagne on hold for next year, possibly for Andy Murray. Um, this year's entire vintage may be in some jeopardy, as Phil Lavelle can explain. <laughs> That'll be what is <laughs> Coming up, the BBC News Channel. Here on Breakfast, though. Right now, though, let's get news, travel and weather, where you are. See you in a moment. Morning, this is Breakfast with Susanna Reid and Bill Turnbull. Good morning, our main news this morning. Andy Murray has vowed to get his mind right for the Olympics after his defeat in the men's singles final at Wimbledon. He says he'll take... The last four water companies with hosepipe bans have announced they are lifting them from today. The restrictions which have... Two, those are the main stories this morning. Here's what's coming up on Breakfast. Should we go over to Wimbledon? Yeah. And uh, find out how Sally's getting on as the clean-up continues there this morning. Morning, Sally. One. See you back here very shortly. Yeah. Now, they describe themselves as a group of friends who just happen to enjoy making music together, but that love of music has seen Keane sell more than 10 million records around the world and cement their reputation as one of the UK's most popular bands. Yep, they've topped the album chart five times in a row, a feat only beaten by a group called The Beatles. And now they're back <laughs> with a new single, not The Beatles. They're reminders, if you need it, of some of your hits. The single Sovereign Light Cafe is out a week from today and they'll be performing live here in the studio at the end of the programme. Now, though, let's have a look outside at this morning's weather, and Matt has the forecast. Yeah. Right. Hey, Matt. 
the reduced Shakespeare Company, are probably best known for their witty distillations of the work of the Bard, and they've been performing since 1981. Now, though, instead of literature, they're focusing on the history of sport for the latest tour to coincide, surprise, surprise, with the Olympics. From, like, archery to wrestling. From basketball to bocce. No, it, no in a draw, a draw. It draw. makes baseball look exciting. Yeah. So, yeah. It can, it can end in a tie, very, yes. very rarely, but yes. in, a, in a draw. Yeah, in a draw. Is well, that's, no you're now you're talking... Tradition, every winter tradition. Uh, including the English Panto, so we hope to bring that here next yeah. year. Yes, we're kind of spreading a happy uh, Merry Christmas Kwanaka Hanzuka <laughs> <laughs> to the nation. All bases covered. Uh, when, you're, who, who's, when you're distilling all this, do you work t together? How does, it, how does the process work in terms of sort of taking Thank and you. Uh, Thank you. our lawyers will... <laughs> It's, it's 9 o'clock. Someone's o lawyers is going to be in touch. Uh, the Reduced Shakespeare Company are on tour across the UK until the end of August or until... <laughs> yeah, until now. now, they're possibly the world's most powerful yet unpredictable forces of... Haven't we just spoken to them? And now a new <laughs> landmark BBC series is uncovering the secrets of the planet's volcanoes. For four days, Kate Humble will be joined by leading geologist Professor Ian Stewart and she'll be broadcasting live from Hawaii. And they've given us a sneak preview should be an explosive oh. event. Oh, it should be. In a moment, the best-selling author, Jody Pico, is going to... Just here's a last quick look at what's happening where you are. See you in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Back. The last time that Jodie Pico was on this programme, she taught Bill and I to howl like wolves. She did. She's one of the most successful novelists of recent times, with 19 books so far, selling millions worldwide. There aren't many subjects she hasn't addressed over the years. But her latest book, called Between the Lines, is pretty special. She co-wrote it with her teenage daughter, Samantha Van Leer, who came up with the story. There's some daughters of very successful novel writing mothers might <laughs> think the last thing I'm going to do is try and write. <laughs> but you wanted to do this. It was your idea, wasn't it? You picked Judy when you heard this idea when you were already in the middle of a book tour for a very <laughs> successful novel. I mean, it must have been fantastic. Your yeah. daughter, no. none of that. Why does the prince have to have dark hair rather than blonde hair? Because it's really sexier. I'm sorry, but it is. Dark haired guy. Is it? I is it? I don't know. From us uh, for today, tomorrow's show, Patricia Hodge will be with us and we'll be finding out why there's a beach and even sharks in Yorkshire. Mm. Going to be back from six o'clock here on BBC One tomorrow, but now we're going to leave you with Keen performing their brand new single. Single, even. Sovereign Light.